Hello and welcome to the Yup 5108 Microcontroller Grand Tour. Today we are going to get into the detail of the design, instruction set, method of operation, and boot sequence of the Yup 5108 Microcontroller. If you'd like to follow along with this series, all of the files for this project, including this Logisim circuit, uh, the ROM files, the program source files, and this user's guide are all available to our patrons at any level. If you'd like this content and you'd like to see more, please consider supporting us on Patreon or by simply liking this video and leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching so far and let's get into it. Quick note on the version of Logisim that I am running. The Yup5108 microcontroller ROM files contain what I call byte literals. Uh, they are designated by the use of an apostrophe before the actual character that is to be loaded into memory. I added this feature so as to ease the writing of long string literals uh, in the ROM files, for example. I'm able to simply write this instead of this after having looked up every character in an ASCII table. As of this recording, this feature is not yet built into the main line of the Logisim project. So your best bet is to download the Logisim from my GitHub, which is linked in the description. When you first open the yup5108 circuit file in Logisim, you're presented with the desktop view. This view is meant to look like a 1980s PC with just a screen and keyboard. Since the interface is text only, there's no need for annoying desk rodents. While this level is great for programs that are already working, it provides no way to debug those programs that are not yet working. Hovering over the center of the screen, a magnifying glass appears, and double clicking on it opens the computer's case, so to speak, showing the internals. We have the processor screen and keyboard, along with some interface logic for the front panel reset go stop buttons, and in addition an internal keyboard. From this perspective one can see the entire state of the processor. There are four 8-bit registers. Three labeled A, B, and T for temporary are used by the ALU, and one additional register is the instruction register that holds the current instruction that is being processed. The data pointer, stack pointer, and instruction pointers are 16-bit registers. These values indicate a location in either DRAM or EEPROM that is going to be read or written to. While either the stack or data pointers can be used to address both DRAM and EEPROM, the instruction pointer is limited to only addressing the EEPROM. And there are good reasons for this that we'll get into later. The DRAM EEPROM register displays show the contents of the byte pointed to or to be loaded from the pointer registers. The four displays along the right hand side show the I.O. port values. Along the bottom are the displays for the ROM lookup tables that are used to execute each instruction. More on these when we get into the method of operation. Right now let's start at the beginning, the design considerations. The Yup5108 was designed from the ground up based only on my experience and vague memories of the features and operations of the Intel 8051 microcontroller. As my first exposure to embedded systems some 30 plus years ago, the 8051 represents a significant turning point in my software career. The feature list in the intro video was the extent of the system requirements that I started with. Learning Logisim evolution along the way, I first developed the ALU, then the serial registers, and the microcode execution unit that turned out to be way too small for a CISC system. And I was actually closer to the simulated RISC processor used in my advanced CS course around about 1993. It was only after reading the biography of the Intel 8051's designer that I switched from defining the instruction set based on the hardware that I had designed and instead designed the hardware to match an instruction set that I designed. Fundamentally, a CPU has three jobs. Copy data from one location to another, combine two data values via some function, and place the result in one location or the other, 
and manage system operations such as no-op, system halt, and IRQ control. But there are fewer locations used for calculation than there are in the system overall. Only the A, B, T, and DR registers can be accessed by the ALU for calculations, whereas the remaining locations, ROM, RAM, stack pointer, instruction pointer, along with the four I.O. parts, brings the total number of possible single byte locations to 15. To copy a byte from one location to another, first the output enable line of the source location must be asserted so as to place the value from that location onto the shared data bus. Then the load or write enable line of the destination location is inserted to complete the copy. With 15 possible locations, it was only natural to break down the instruction into a high and a low nibble of four bytes each. The low nibble contains the location whose output is to be enabled, and the high nibble defines which location to load. This gives us an instruction numbering pattern where the first hex digit nibble is the destination of the operation, and the second hex digit nibble is the source. This accounts for the majority of instructions except along the diagonal, where the source and the destination would be the same. These diagonal instructions are used for system operations and some ALU functions. Doing this for all 15 locations, however, leaves no space in the instruction table for the rest of the ALU and bit functions. To make space for these instructions, it made sense to remove some of the uncommon or illogical memory transfer operations, such as directly from one I.O. port to the next, and transfers between the instruction pointer and the stack pointer as well as directly between RAM and ROM. At this point, the instruction set is pretty much stable, but alternate instructions could be developed and used in place of the L star Z, L star O, and L star H instructions. Other less useful instructions, including LRP, LDP, LRI, LDI, LRK, LDK, LRS, LDS, LKR, LSR, LKD, and LSD. The YUP5108 operates using a series of lookup tables held in three ROMs within the Instruction Decode and Sequencer Logic module. The Sequencer ROM, 256 by 32 bit, is addressed using the Sequencer Counter, which is an 8 bit counter, and each value from the Sequencer ROM is used to drive control lines as well as the expression of each nibble of the control word, which is 16 bits. At reset, the sequence counter is zero and the boot sequence is followed until the first instruction of your program is loaded. The IR sequence map ROM 256 by 16 bit is addressed using the loaded instruction and its output value is used to provide the ALU command, four bits, and the ALU inputs, another four bits, for the instruction along with setting the sequence counter, eight bits, to the location in the sequencer ROM used to process that class of instructions. While there are 256 instructions, only 30 instruction sequence have been used to process them so far. The IRQ sequence map ROM, 8 by 16 bits, is enabled when an IRQ is pending and it is addressed by the active IRQ bits. When the current instruction reaches completion and the load the next instruction happens, the output from the IRQ sequence map is used instead of the instruction register sequence map ROM output for that instruction, thus initiating the IRQ call sequence. The above could and would normally be simplified into a single larger ROM were it to be developed as a single chip. I'm using separate standard size ROMs in this design so that it can be more easily built using integrated circuit chips. Upon boot or reset, the YUB5108 clears the A, B, T, D, R, and IP registers. The stack pointer is initialized to 0xFFFF. Hardware IRQ is masked. The instruction pointer is loaded with the reset vector location. And the instruction processing proceeds from that point. So that was all that I was planning on covering in this episode. Join us next time as we write some software using the instruction set we just showed you and possibly even add a new instruction to that instruction set. So be sure to ring that bell for notifications so you never miss an episode. See you next time.